Welcome back to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap an action-adventure film called, Full Metal Alchemist. Spoilers incoming. The movie begins when Ed and Al run outside their house to approach their mother, Trisha, who is hanging their clothes. The two shows their craft as Trisha congratulates Al and Ed towards their improving alchemy skills. Suddenly, Trisha falls on the ground after her son runs towards the spacious grassland around their area. Her children notice that something went wrong with their mother, and she dies instantly. Burial takes place to send off Trisha's remains, as Ed and Al will be orphaned as their father Van did not return to their home. Due to their desperation to bring back Trisha, after Ed and Al pursue their self-alchemy knowledge training to perform a ritual aligned with the law of equivalent exchange. The brothers use alchemy to revive their mother from her deathbed. Collecting the materials they need, Al and Ed help each other fulfill their mission to bring back their mother. Using metals, various chemicals, and drops of their blood, they have completed the ingredients to accomplish their experiment. Ed and Al pour their mixture into a wooden container and place it inside the transmutation circle to summon their mother. As the ritual occurs, the siblings notice that something went wrong with their experiment, there is a rapid change in their surroundings. An unknown force builds up as it slowly destroys their house, slurping everything found within the area. Seconds passed, the struggling Al starts to float in the air as if it is pulling him towards the transmutation circle. An older man, Cornello, is running as if he is escaping from someone. Ed sneakily traces his whereabouts while following him as he hides from the roofs. Taking an excellent chance to trap him, Ed jumps off the top to collect the ring containing the Philosopher's Stone. Cornello maneuvers the ring as he controls the rocks from the wall as several attacks are launched to eliminate Ed. Running away from the countless attacks Ed has received, he did not notice the coming hit right through his face. The chase continues as Cornello uses the power of the Philosopher's Stone to escape. He commands the ring to produce scary monstrous stone animals to attack Ed to stop him from retrieving the ring. Believing that it is the natural philosopher's ring, Ed transmutes a weapon, a spear Y used to destroy the monsters. When the table turns, and Ed is almost in danger, Al appears to save him. While the monsters continuously attack them, it reveals that Al's body is too hollow, and Ed's arm and legs are pure prosthetics, he is the full metal alchemist. When Ed chases the Cornello till they reach the busy street, the latter holds a civilian captive. Later on, Hand-to-hand -hand combat with the older man destroys the ring, as it also ruins his artificial arm. The flame alchemists interfere with securing the place from further damage. Colonel Roy kills the fake Philosopher's Stone before his men bring Ed and Cornello in their quarters. However, Cornello was able to escape as the helpless Ed is still unstable upon knowing that the Philosopher's Stone is fake. The Colonel informs Ed that the Philosopher's Stone is non-existent as per the military advisory. Ed reveals that he is striving to find the natural stone to bring back Al's body. Unexpectedly, the arrival of Captain Hughes together with General Hikuro interrupts Ed and the Colonel. He informs Ed that he is looking forward to meeting both of them as he might offer them some military work. Winry, Ed, and Al's childhood friends arrive and immediately send her regards. Upon knowing that Ed has been sent to the headquarters, she immediately strides her way to check on his prosthetic arm. Meanwhile, Hakuro instructs Roy to introduce Al and Ed to show Tucker as he has further planned for them. Cornello confronts lust, envy, and gluttony about the validity of the Philosopher's Stone. Envy replicates his appearance as lust kills him instantly. Gluttony then walks near his body and eats him afterward. Captain Hughes and his wife, Gracia, accommodate their visitors, Ed, Al, and Winry. Gracia teases Winry that she cares so much about Ed's welfare while Al's face turns sour due to jealousy. Ed wakes up from his reverie and finds out that Al is not around. Going outside to look for Al, Ed has been transferred into another realm, the Gate of Truth, as he faces an interconnected identity of himself. In line with the law of equivalent exchange, he lost his legs upon discovering the truth of human transmutation. Ed comes back from his reality as he scrutinizingly experiences the excruciating pain of his leg loss. Seeing a scary creature inside the transmutation circle, Ed tries to get away as he realizes that this is not the fate that he wants. When he hits the metal statue beside him, Ed tries to bargain his arms and legs in exchange for the return of Al. Ed wakes up from his nightmare as Al watches his brother seeks to breathe steadily after being tortured by his dreams. The reenactment of his previous experiences due to impulsive decisions still burdens Ed. 
When morning comes, Royal brings Al, Ed, and Winry to the Sewing Life Alchemist show Tucker to join the research that may help to restore Al's body. Captain Hughes, about his sudden appearance in their town, like the latter, informs them about the ongoing Ishvalan civil war. Hughes reports that Roy must be careful of his decisions as it might cost him his safety. Tucker shows his research subjects to Ed as he explains the details about the results. Ed reveals that he was dragged into the gate of truth and bargains his arm for Al's soul. Ed asks Tucker how to retrieve Al's body, instead, the latter suggests an alternative plan in restoring Al's body. Captain Hughes sends off the leaving Ed and Winry, who are currently waiting for their train to leave. Ed informs Hughes about the stone researcher Dr. Marco that may help them find the Philosopher's Stone. After becoming a state alchemist, Ed will begin finding where the legendary rock is, the main answer in repairing his and Al's broken bodies. Al will stay with Tucker as he will be examined in line with the latter's previous similar encounters. Tucker covers Al's metallic body with a white blanket containing the transmutation circle symbol. He tries hypnotizing Al to collect information to get to know him better. While Tucker performs his duty, Al starts to feel drowsy as he slowly loses consciousness and thinks about the false memories Tucker has informed him. Even before they reach their destination, Winry decides to leave the train. She starts running when they bump into a woman and shows her Dr. Marco's photograph. The woman pinpoints Dr. Marco's location as the latter attacks Ed and Winry, who intruded in his place. Unfortunately, the doctor's self-defense play backfires as he hurt himself. Ed confronts Dr. Marco whether the Philosopher's Stone is authentic, but the doctor sends them off. He warns Ed that he must stay away from the stone when suddenly, Lust appears as Dr. Marco continuously shoots her using his gun. Lust has slammed the three in the wall using her sharp and long nails as she stabs Dr. Marco. Before Dr. Marco dies, he gives the stone to Ed as he informs him that he needs Laboratory 5 to transmute it. Despite being killed, Ed retrieved the doctor's notes. Returning to Tucker's place, Ed calls for their attention as he finds no one. Ed finds Tucker inside a room where he presents a delusion that can communicate with humans. But when the illusion speaks, Ed realizes that Nina and Alexander are missing. Tucker has sacrificed Nina, his child, and Alexander the dog to accomplish his research. Upon realization, Ed immediately punches Tucker to wake him from his delusions, but Tucker mocks him. Al interrupts Ed from hurting Tucker, as he might kill him. Colonel Roy's men have brought Tucker upon discovering his inhumane deeds. Roy approaches Ed and Al to encourage them to collect themselves as they still have missions to accomplish. Ed locked himself in the library to decipher the information they had gathered. Al, on the other hand, feels indifferent as Ed keeps on alienating him after his encounter with Dr. Marco. Struggling to find out the answers, Ed seeks help from Captain Hughes, who visited him in his little dungeon. Hughes brought Lieutenant Ross in his company as he instructed her to deliver some food to feed the hungry Ed. Hughes and Ross try to help Ed find answers about the record of the stone's transmutation circle. In their speculation, there is an inside job happening, which hinders them from discovering the truth. Ed then informs that Lust is not human, as he witnesses her unusual abilities. Ed then asks about Laboratory No. 5 when General Haruko appears and tells them its location. Ed, Al, and Winry check the location per Haruko's direction. Upon knowing that the laboratory is an incooperating cannery company, Ed has become frustrated as there is no clue given in their investigation. Al confronted Ed about his discovery when he talked to Dr. Marco, but Ed could not answer him. It reveals that Al's session with Tucker made him doubt himself, as he also blames Ed that he had given him a false memory. Winry has reminded Al that Ed has been doing his best to save him because Ed loves his brother. Hughes tries to decipher the hidden message behind the Ishvalan civil war and the ongoing riots in Riol. Upon analyzing the upheaval of the war and location, he tries to seek an answer using the map. Hughes discovers that the laboratory's areas play a significant role in solving the case. To his surprise, Lust appears to assassinate him. Despite getting wounded from Lust's attack, Hughes calls in Colonel Roy's office to deliver his discovery. However, as he patiently waits for Roy's response on the other line, someone who looks exactly like Roy appears and shoots him. Ed is summoned to the East Area Headquarters as the military guards escort him. Arriving at the headquarters, they handcuffed him as they delivered him in a room together with Lieutenant Hawkeye. She explains that Hughes has been murdered, 
waves of memories flood Ed's mind while listening to the unexpected news. Ed angrily lashes out at Hawkeye, asking her of Hugh's murderer, she reveals that it is Colonel Roy. Through the help of Hawkeye, Ed ends up escaping the headquarters to disregard the interrogation about Hughes's case. While Hawkeye tries to remove the handcuffs in his hand, she informs Ed that researchers call the POW Camp Lab No. 5. Roy sneaks out to see the military preparations that will attack him once he arrives at the headquarters. However, as he passes towards the tunnel, he is cornered by several soldiers headed by Lt. Ross. She informs Roy that he has become the primary suspect in Hugh's murder. Ed and Hawkeye arrive as they warn their soldiers to stop shooting. To their surprise, Roy flicks his finger as the fire slowly roasts Ross from her position. It then reveals that it is Envy, Lust's apprentice, who is just copying Ross's identity. Lust and Gluttony appear as Roy informs Ed that Lust and her team are homunculi or the so-called artificial humans with their unique markings of Ouroboros tattoo. Lust reveals that she planned on framing Roy in Hughes's death through the help of his associate Envy. Roy shots them mercilessly as he showers them with countless bullets. But when Hawkeye asks if Lust has helped Tucker escape, she orders Envy to leave. She calls Gluttony to eat all the soldiers, except for Ed. Gluttony chases the soldiers out, while Lust targets Roy and stabs him. Disregarding his pain, Roy orders Ed to follow Lust and Associates. Upon reaching Laboratory 5, Ed sees the unmoving allies on a table, and he immediately runs in his direction. To his surprise, a gunshot stops him from his abrupt move as he sees Tucker pointing his gun towards him. He warns Ed not to move forward, or else he will harm the unconscious body of Winry. Tucker reveals that he asks Al to cross the gate of truth, as he now discovers how to put a soul in an object. Tucker shows Ed the philosopher's stone in his hands, as the latter unbelievably stares at it. Tucker orders Ed to see what is written on the floor, it is the pattern to transmute the philosopher's stone. Ed fell on his knees as he could not help himself believing his grievance upon his realizations, the stones transmuted from human lives as the place was a war prison camp. Tucker reveals that Dr. Marco and his team have transmuted many philosopher's stones in the fifth laboratory. Suddenly, Lust appears and stabs Tucker while he shares his knowledge about the experiment. She instructs her apprentice to reveal himself as she is not so impressed with his deeds. To their surprise, General Hikuro is an ally of Lust, and he opts to support Tucker as he is the primary key in solving the mystery. Hakuro reveals that the military would like to prevent the transmutation of soldiers as it may create a powerful army. Hakuro pulls the breaker as the mannequin soldier's homunculi starts to appear from the ceiling. Hakuro decides to activate the soldiers when Lust attacks her. He pulls the buttons that will distribute the philosopher's stones and inject a soul in each dummy available. One by one, the mannequins have gained life as they dramatically fall and gain consciousness upon reaching the ground. Striding his way towards the dummy's direction, Hakuro has been eaten by the monsters he created. Roy starts burning the mannequins to stop them from coming outside as the public may be at risk. Roy orders Hawkeye to inform their soldiers to prepare if the situation may be uncontrollable. Meanwhile, Ed starts hitting the dummies who would like to harm Al, as Al builds a barricade that will hinder them from coming nearer to their place. Winry also reveals herself when she hides inside Al's hollow metal body. Lust and Envy escape the laboratory, but Roy chases them down, and he burns Envy. Due to the wound he received from Lust's earlier attempts at killing him, Roy stops roasting Envy and falls on his knees. When Lust again tries to assassinate Roy, Ed helps him and stabs him through a sharp stone spear. Ed realizes that homunculi aren't immortal. Roy killed Lust and steals her philosophy's stone. Envy returns to his parasitic form, while Gluttony mourns for her death. The movie ends when Ed returns to his reality to restore Al's existence. Despite seeing Al's body, he cannot trade the stone for Al's body as it also causes another life. Ed bids his goodbye to Roy as they leave and chooses to move forward with their life. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.